Hello and welcome to the SimLab Nonlinear Handlebar Tutorial. In this tutorial, we will delve into the fascinating structural static world that contains nonlinearities. You'll learn what nonlinearities are, why they matter in structural analysis, and how to effectively capture them using OptiStruct's nonlinear solution. Additionally, we'll explore the key differences between linear and nonlinear analysis, helping you understand when and why to choose one approach over the other. By the end of this session, you'll have a clear understanding of nonlinear concepts and their practical application in solving complex structural challenges. Let's get started. In structural analysis, understanding and accounting for different types of nonlinearities is crucial for accurate simulations. These nonlinearities fall into three main categories geometric nonlinearity, material nonlinearity, and constraint and contact nonlinearity. Let's explore each in detail. Geometric nonlinearity occurs when changes in the structure's geometry during deformation significantly affect the constitutive and equilibrium equations. For small displacements and rotations, linear analysis suffices as it assumes these changes are negligible. This simplification reduces computational costs and is commonly used in structural analysis. However, in scenarios where large deformations occur, this assumption no longer holds. In such cases, a nonlinear approach is required where the stiffness matrix is updated incrementally throughout the analysis to account for geometric changes. While accurate, this iterative process is computationally expensive. Material nonlinearity describes the nonlinear behavior of materials under various conditions, such as deformation, deformation history, rate of deformation, temperature, and pressure. It can be categorized into rate-independent and rate-dependent behaviors. In rate-independent nonlinearity, materials like rubber exhibit nonlinear elasticity, where stress and strain are not linearly related, but deformation is recoverable. Conversely, elastic plastic materials transition to plastic behavior when stress exceeds the yield point. Rate-dependent behaviors, like viscoelasticity and viscoplasticity, account for time-dependent responses, often seen in materials subjected to high deformation rates or elevated temperatures. These behaviors cannot be ignored when time significantly affects material performance. Constraint and contact nonlinearities arise from interactions between components or kinematic constraints within a model. Contact nonlinearity in particular introduces complexity as the status of contact, open or closed, changes dynamically based on the relative position of interacting surfaces. This behavior, akin to boundary condition updates, necessitates iterative solutions to maintain equilibrium. Additionally, factors like friction and nonlinear contact stiffness contribute to the overall complexity. These dynamic changes in boundary conditions and stiffness make constraint and contact nonlinearities a critical consideration in accurately simulating real-world interactions between structural components. This exercise combines three types of nonlinearities, geometric nonlinearity, material nonlinearity characterized by an elastic plastic stress strain curve, and nonlinearity due to contacts, including friction and freeze contact behavior. A nonlinear static analysis is performed to account for these effects, providing a comprehensive understanding of the system's behavior under realistic conditions. To quantify the differences between linear and nonlinear approaches, a linear static analysis is also conducted using tie contacts. Comparing the results of the linear and nonlinear static solutions highlights the impact of these nonlinear factors on the model's response. To set up the analysis, import the database and navigate to the solutions ribbon. Select Structural and choose the nonlinear static solution. Assign all bodies in the database to the solution and click OK. Next, right-click on the solution name to define the first load case, then right-click on the load case to create a second one. Rename the load cases as pretension and loading to reflect their respective purposes. In the Analysis ribbon, select the contact icon and choose the Auto Contact option. For this step, 
designate the main and secondary bodies, allowing SimLab to automatically generate the contact surfaces based on the specified tolerance value. Bolt-related contacts are defined as freeze contacts, while all other contacts are set as friction contacts, ensuring accurate representation of the interactions between components. The created contacts are applied across all load cases. To review them, simply right-click on Contacts to open the Contacts Manager. This tool provides a clear visualization of the contact types and surfaces, allowing for easy inspection and the ability to edit them as needed. In the current load case, constraints are applied by fixing the bottom of the shaft in the X, Y, and Z directions. Next, navigate to the load section, select Pretension, and apply a pretension load of 2000N to the model. We begin by defining the load case settings, enabling the large displacement method and setting the number of sub-increments to 25. Load case result requests are also specified at this stage. Next, the second load case is set as current, and constraints from the first load case are transferred. For the second load case, a load is defined in the Y-axis direction and applied to the central RBE nodes at the edge of the handlebar. The same load case settings are used as before, with the addition of load case continuation to ensure the final increment of the first load case serves as the starting increment for the second. Load case result requests are defined as in the previous case. Global solver settings are updated to enable solution continuation, and under format and execute options, the number of processors is set to four.
Next, we import and thoroughly review the stress-strain curve to ensure the material properties align with the requirements of the analysis. Once verified, we assign the elastic plastic material to all solid bodies in the model, except for the bolts. The bolts are treated separately by importing the material steel from the built-in material database. This material is purely elastic, making it suitable for the bolt body, and is assigned specifically to these components. By carefully differentiating the materials for the solid bodies and bolts, we accurately capture the mechanical behavior of each part in the simulation. We are ready to run our simulation. By reviewing the log file, we can closely monitor the progress of the solution as it is solved incrementally. The log file provides valuable real-time insights into the solver's performance, including key updates at each sub-increment. Additionally, we can visualize and track incremental solver errors by plotting the convergence. This allows us to assess how well the solution is progressing and identify any potential issues with convergence. By leveraging these tools, we ensure the analysis remains on track and that any solver-related challenges are promptly addressed for accurate and reliable results. During the post-processing stage, we can thoroughly visualize and inspect the results of the analysis, including stresses, displacements, strains, and contact statuses across various components. By utilizing features such as hiding and isolating specific instances, we can focus on areas of interest and gain a more detailed understanding of localized behaviors within the model. Additionally, we can update the contour bar to customize the visualization and highlight critical values effectively. In this phase, we identify the maximum displacement of the handlebar, which is slightly above 16 mm. This value is a key result of the nonlinear static analysis and provides insight into the structure's response under the given load conditions. To evaluate the impact of nonlinearities, we will later compare this maximum displacement with the equivalent value obtained from a linear static analysis. This comparison will allow us to quantify the differences and validate the significance of incorporating nonlinear effects in the simulation.
For the linear static analysis, we begin by selecting all bodies in the model and defining a linear static solution. During this process, we enable the option to automatically create tie contacts, ensuring that all contact interactions are generated seamlessly when the solution is created. Once the solution setup is complete, we define two load cases, naming them appropriately to reflect their specific purposes. To streamline the process and maintain consistency, we transfer all the loads and boundary conditions from the previous nonlinear static solution. It is crucial to transfer the constraints specifically from the first load case, as that is where they were originally enforced. This step ensures the integrity of the boundary conditions and maintains the intended setup for the linear analysis. After setting up the solution, we proceed to run the analysis. Once completed, we thoroughly review the results, focusing on key outputs such as stresses, displacements, and strains. These results will serve as a basis for comparison with the non-linear static analysis, allowing us to assess the differences in behavior between the two approaches and better understand the significance of incorporating non-linear effects in the simulation. This comparison highlights the advantages and limitations of each method, providing valuable insights into the system's response under different modeling assumptions. The linear static analysis shows a maximum displacement of just over 10 millimeters, while the nonlinear analysis reaches over 16 millimeters. This difference highlights the impact of nonlinearities, including plastic material behavior, frictional contacts, and large displacements. Nonlinear analysis captures these real world complexities, providing more accurate and realistic results compared to the simplified assumptions of linear analysis. 